Welcome to The Thing, part one. What is a multiverse? So it's essentially like multiple universe. You're in a universe, you're you, there you are. And then there's a different world, another world with a different you, different version of you, it's cowboy, cowboy you. There it is, it's brilliant. <laughs> but it's not the only one, there's, there's infinite, there's you, you can be made out of jelly, doesn't matter. Sheldon Cooper said that thing about... While I subscribe to the many worlds theory which posits the existence of an infinite number of Sheldons and an infinite number of universes, I assure you that none of them am I dancing. Are you fun in any of them? The math would suggest that in a few I'm a clown made of candy. And so that's, that's the basic concept there. So in a multiverse, if there was a bunch of them, let's say, you know, you've got one universe, you've got another, and then there's another, you've got a whole cluster of these universes, and they, they could all intertwine. And so the multiverse could interact. There's, there's lots of examples of different ones interacting with each other. I mean, you know, think about some good crossovers that you've seen. Are we crossovers of real life or crossovers of, like, TV shows? TV shows. Uh, well, you got... Future and Simps of, uh, Simpsons, that's yeah. one. So you've got The Simpsons, and that crosses over with Futurama, Family Guy, American Dad, Bob's Burgers, Cleveland Show. Archer. Archer, does it cross over with Archer? Bob's Burgers does. Well, there you go, so <laughs> it, it all intertwines, it's all multiversally connected. Some people call a phenomenon Simpsons time, for the frozen time in The Simpsons where the characters don't age. Now, of course, in a multiverse situation... In a true multiverse, there wouldn't be limitations on copyright between universes. And at the moment, if you look at something like the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're never going to see somebody show up there like Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. Because there's, you know, uh, what, what would you call it? It's uh, copyright barriers. But in a true multiverse, there wouldn't be copyright barriers. In theory, they would all be able to interact. Something like Timmy Turner when he did Timmy's Secret Wish back at the dawn of television itself. Timmy Turner wished that people wouldn't age. I secretly wish that everyone would stop aging so that I could stay ten years old and keep my fairies forever. <laughs> what? When did you make this wish? Fifty years ago. And how many years went by, nobody, nobody age. But this didn't just affect Timmy Turner's reality, did it? Because... As we know, in the multiverse, Timmy Turner had the crossover with the Jimmy Neutron and the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. And then you've got, you know, the, the, the crossovers. With, uh, there was that time when Timmy Turner jumped into the TV and he ran around a bunch of TV realities. It was a whole TV Nexus multiverse crossover bullshit. It was great. It was fantastical. So if Timmy Turner can cross over with all these other locations, then they could all suffer from the secret wish as well. So the secret wish could explain the Simpsons time. However, you pull out things like Family Guy and American Dad, where time does actually tick along at a slower rate. Things like the neighbor who had the baby, Bonnie, in, um, in Family Guy. She was pregnant for like, what, 13 years, 15 years? She finally did have the baby. It's voiced by Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Today, I saw a balloon. <laughs> right, so so we've got this, this multiverse, all these intertwining universes connecting in different ways. Uh, you look at Cartoon Network, they had the episode with the Cartoon Nexus, where all of the old previous Cartoon Network properties were all pulled into a multiverse by a multiversal villain. And he was all like, aha, I'm going to erase you, I'm going to draw on your face with a pen or something. And it was bad. It was bad. You don't want to have a multiverse pen draw on your face. God. Oh. Every previous Cartoon Network property appeared in the Cartoon Nexus. Everything from the Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack to Powerpuff Girls to Camp Laszlo to Dexter's Laboratory to Cow and Chicken. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Don't worry, I'm all over it. Right after me programs. I've actually seen a couple of episodes of that one. Codename Kids Next Door? Now this is the crossover that you need to watch. Alright. This is Codename Kids Next Door, Billy and Mandy. The Grim Adventures of the Codename Kids Next Door. Dun dun dun! That crossover exists. Another one uh, The Simpsons did was with Supernatural. Um, yeah, Supernatural Bones. 
Go! I love bones. You know what I get from watching bones? A big throbbing smile. Um, Supernatural also did one with uh, Scooby Doo. No. Did they really? Yep. There's a Supernatural yeah. episode where they're in Scooby Doo. Another one the Simpsons did was with the uh, the X Files. Yeah. Yeah. Now going back to Supernatural for a moment. Supernatural not only did one with Scooby Doo. Supernatural did one with our world. They straight up left the Supernatural world and came to our God. world. Where everyone thought they were the actors playing the dudes in Supernatural, but they weren't. Is that a multiverse theory or a fourth wall theory? It's both. Yeah. But it's canon. Exactly. There was that whole scene where they go up to Castiel and they're like, hey Cass, we've got the key. What does it do? And he's like, it's the key to Heaven's Armory. you got to give me the key and I'm going <laughs> to take it to save the world. And they're like, wow, thank goodness that we came across you, Cass. And he's like... Wait a minute, are you guys changing the script? Or what, what's happening? He's reading the script, it's not even real. Is the guy playing Cass? Like, <laughs> That's awesome. I don't think I've seen that episode. Oh, it's so good. So good. We've seen SpongeBob with the Doodle Doodle Bop. It's a, a two-dimensional two version that he drew with a magic pencil. Yeah, and, I do remember that one. Yeah, that was but, weird. It was weird, but there was a follow-up called the Doodle Dimension, where it turns out there's a whole 2D dimension or something, and SpongeBob goes there, and it's a whole hell, hell of blue. Multiverse. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, well, of course, you've always got your live-action crossovers as well, like the It's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana. Yep. What... You never saw That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana? It was a crossover between Hannah Montana, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and That's So Raven. I mean, I've never watched Zack and Cody or any of those ones. You never saw any of the old Disney. Oh, goodness. I Th watched a few episodes of That's So Raven, but yeah. Okay, well, what yeah. about Kim Possible, The Proud Family, Lilo and Stitch, American Dragon, and Recess? Yes. They've all crossed over. Have they really? In the show, Lilo and Stitch, the series. There's an episode where the Proud family comes to visit. There's an episode where Jason Long comes to visit. There's the episode where Kim Possible shows up. There's that time when the other one I said, Recess, comes to the island as well. Because why not? Maybe I've never... Because I've never seen that one, but I've seen Recess and American Dragon. You've seen those two, but you didn't watch Lilo and Stitch. No. Oh, well, that's where you missed it. Yeah. That's where the crossover took place. See, sometimes you've got to pay attention to where the crossover actually is. I believe the cartoon Nexus took place in OK KO Let's Be Heroes. Quite possibly the best cartoon that ever existed, other than SpongeBob. Yeah, that was SpongeBob. I mean, SpongeBob's undeniably the king of all cartoons ever. Yeah. But if you watch OK KO Let's Be Heroes, there's Professor Venomous. Ooh, daddy vibes. You know I hate videos, game think. Mm. If we're oh, going to yeah. talk crossovers and multiverses, yep. we have to touch on Scooby-Doo. Countless versions of Scooby-Doo exist. Oh, yes. And there's been countless crossovers of Scooby-Doo versions into other things. Do you know how many Batman Scooby-Doo crossovers there's been? Like three. Batman and Scooby-Doo always teaming up, having a good time. Got to solve a mystery and arrest the penguin. <laughs> I feel like that's probably a crossover that maybe couldn't have happened. That did. Yeah. Multiple times. Look at him. Look at that right there. Am I glad he's frozen in there and that we're out here and that he's the sheriff and that we're frozen out here and that we're in there and I just remembered we're out here. What I want to know is where's the caveman? Okay, well, the obvious problem... Yeah, it all sounds great. It's uh, all these fun multiverses. You could be a cowboy. You could be a pile of jelly. Hooray! It sounds like heaps of fun. But you know what the obvious problem is? What's that? It's infinity. There's too many of these infinite universes. There's multiple. There's uh, uncountable numbers worth. So, part two. Infinity. <laughs> so what exactly is the problem with infinity? Because it never ends. It never ends. However... It can be calculated and quantified. Ah, here's, here's, here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. Let's take Rick and Morty, for example. They had the central finite curve put in place to ensure that only universes where Rick Sanchez is the smartest being were allowed to be contained within the central finite curve, a, a cluster of universes. Let's, let's call it a pocket infinity taken from the regular infinity. 
Now, how would you do that, for example? Well, you got, got to first look at how infinity works. And here's, here's how we could do that. I can make an infinity right now using just zero and one, like a computer. I can make an infinity that just goes zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Infinite. Just keeps going, right? But a zero to one infinity would be significantly smaller than a one to nine infinity. If the digits one to nine were put into an infinite string, it would look like eight seven six one four one five three two zero three one seven nine eight two one five six zero eight nine two seven four nine six infinitely. It'll just keep going forever. So with the central finite curve, what you would have done is you would have taken the infinity with all these numbers between zero to nine. And you would have specifically taken just the ones that are 0 and 1. Let's say that 0 and 1 are the universes where Rick Sanchez is the smartest being. So we could have combinations like 101 or 001010. And even though they came out of an infinity that was 89764901109, that would be the only ones. Th that would be the only ones and zeros. Yeah. So by taking all of the ones and zeros out of infinity, We've created a smaller infinity, the one zero infinity, the pocket infinity. That, that can be a central finite curve. Yep. But then obviously the problem becomes infinite infinities. Part, part three, infinite infinities. Because the infinity doesn't just go to one to nine. We could make an even larger infinity if we threw in letters from alphabet. Alphabet is how many? 26? Yes. So if we went from the digit one all the way through to Z, and then we could have an infinite string that looks like C94QF1A6GFDHJZOADH7Q3938. Infinitely, it just keeps going. And that would be a much, much larger infinity than the 1 to, Z, 1 to 9 infinity. Yeah, but that also doesn't make sense, because if everything's infini infinity, why does... Like, I understand why it's longer. Yeah, it's But a... wouldn't it just keep repeating itself? All three examples shown so far have been infinity. They've all been infinite in size and length. However, the amount of unique combinations per string has gr greatly increased with each jump up that we've put. So uh, 1 to 0 infinity really only has two reoccurring numbers. This is 1 and 0. So even if you had the number 1001010, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, it's a long number, but it's still only built from those two building blocks. Exactly. Yeah, so if we had a 1 to Z infinity, the building blocks being vastly greater, yes, eventually it will contain 0010110, but it'll contain a ton of other shit too. Yeah, exactly. There'll be heaps of numbers and letters all spiraling around each other infinitely. But of course, the problem that I'm trying to say with infinite infinities is that 1 to Z still isn't a true infinity. Exactly. Because the only way for us to achieve a true true infinity is if we had infinite inputs because then we could get infinite outputs so the main problem is you seen the big bang theory some of it yes do you remember what mrs wallowitz looks like yes okay because we've only seen her when she was a pretend corpse in a fantasy and that one time in the background we could just see her wig and moo moo go past yeah the part of the joke was her appearance. All, all show long, they keep joking about her appearance. Howard, I found my girdle. It was in the dryer. <laughs> Great luck. I think it shrunk. I'm spilling out like the Pillsbury Doughboy here. I believe this is a reference to a old play about the ugliest woman to ever have lived. But she never actually appears on stage. It's all just they're referencing her. You, as the viewer, have to use your imagination to fill in the blank. Uh, you saw Rick and Morty. Do you remember the talking cat? Uh, why, why, why can you talk again? It's not important, Jerry. Yes. Do you remember why the cat was a talking cat? Because it came from another, another place. Did you find out why he can talk? It's from outer space. No, no. It no. turns out the reason was Rick used a brain scanner on it, and the truth was so terrifyingly, traumatically devastating that it almost killed Jerry, almost killed Rick. <laughs> At least now, maybe I'll... Get the I'll... hell out of here! But I've got nowhere to Get go! Out. Get out! Get out! <laughs> Jerry, I have a device. It can make us forget. No. I don't think we should forget. Not this. 
Someone has to remember. Someone will. <laughs> Rick had to wipe Jerry's mind clear and just erase the whole thing and pretend it never yes, happened. I do remember that episode. Yeah. So what they saw in the cat's mind was an unfathomable thing. Yeah. Something you can't physically imagine. It's it's unimaginable. And that is the true problem with an infinite infinity. Is even if I was to use every number that math has ever created, and every letter and every symbol that the human language is, any human language, all the human languages that ever could have existed and ever do exist, still wouldn't be able to contain the unimaginable digits. The things that are literally beyond human comprehension. We can't acquire those, so we can't put them into the infinite string. So we can't actually create an infinite input. We can get infinite output easily. We can get an infinite output from just 0 and 1. But we can't possibly put infinite in to then acquire the true infinity out. Well, that makes sense. So that's the main problem. And how this relates to the multiverse is like, um, take any dimension that contains pocket dimensions. Going back to SpongeBob, Doodle Bop, you've got the whole 2D doodle world. You go to somewhere like Futurama, where even they managed to get splat into a 2D plane that one time for a while. Worlds within worlds. And, and those aren't even great examples. You go to something like the SCPs, they've got their infinite Ikea. You get stuck in an Ikea and it goes on forever. Yeah. And, and that is supposedly a nexus between multiverse universes. In theory, any universe that contains an Ikea could happen to contain the portal to the infinite Ikea. So the infinite Ikea doesn't actually exist on any physical plane. It exists in its own reality. One of these infinite numbers, one of these infinite digits, equals infinite Ikea. And then that's on the string with all the other crap in the world. You know, you've got a number digit string and it means gelato. But you've got another one, you've got another random digit string and it means skeletons. And you need all of these infinitely long strings of data in order to create the reality around you. But because of the infinitely long string of data, it creates infinite realities around you. And it creates infinite multiverses. You think there's only one true multiverse and it encompasses all of the realities that as we've now determined, that's actually impossible. You can have multiple sizes of infinite multiverses, but trying to create the one true multiverse. I've driven myself mad in my life. I've, I've spent time on this and it can't be done. You can't quantify a one true multiverse. At the very least, you could come up with two because you've got all the ones where things did happen and all the ones where it never happened. You could 50-50 it out that way if you want to really try and rule a line down the middle. But that doesn't sound very scientifically accurate. Where are your thoughts on this, by the way? You've been silent for three entire parts. I know. I'm just listening. I'm learning. Oh, what did you learn? What have you thought? I just think it's a really interesting concept. The... In the end, it makes complete sense, but also it doesn't. Which part doesn't? No, it's just, it does make sense, but, like, I like how there's just infinite of just everything, but you can't actually have infinite amount of everything yeah, at we, the end of it. Yeah, we can't acquire true infinite. Yeah. Yeah, we can put a limited input in to create an infinite output, but we can't acquire an infinite input. I tried! I started getting all of the Earth languages together and all of the symbols. But then I remembered, obviously, shoot, there'll be ones in the future that haven't been invented yet. And there are ones in the past that have been lost to the record books. Exactly. How do I get my hands on them? But then it was uh, it occurred to me, like Mrs. Wallowitz and the cat with the how does it talk. We can't possibly know. And if we can't possibly know, then we can't input it into the data string. And therefore we can't have infinite input because there are things we're missing exactly we've only got a finite amount of knowledge as humans with our mental capabilities as smart as we fathom ourselves to be it's all just a bit of an illusion isn't it exactly in the grand scheme of the multiverse you are one of but an infinite number of you there's a version of you that doesn't even know that they're you and there's a version of you that's not you yep they exist too <laughs> i think that's so cool yeah and so that's the problem with the multiverse. That's what I've learned in my in my time studying the multiverse. There are universes that are 100% connect. Like you've got Gravity Falls, and it connects with Rick and Morty, and then it connects with Amphibia. But then none of those seem to connect with anything else. Or do they? Amphibia did actually connect to the Disneyverse. 
Look right here, it's a teacup from Beauty and the Beast. And look over here, it's that Sid's t-shirt from the Toy Story. There, look, it's a Wizard of Wars reference. All on the one scene, Disneyverse confirmed. Exactly. So now that Amphibia's in the Disneyverse, that means things to me. Do you think that some of the Disney movies were actually filmed in the same universe? Well, because of Infinity, they could have been and they could not have been. There would be, mathematically speaking, a universe where all of that stuff took place, but there would also be universes where none of that stuff took place, and universes where it all took place individually yep. and went along separate separate paths. For example, you've got things like um, Pinocchio as a toy, Dumbo as a toy. That was an Easter egg in one of the things. I think it might have been in Pinocchio, one of the toys was just a Dumbo toy. I didn't actually know that. But as we know, Dumbo wasn't a toy. Dumbo yes. was an actual elephant. So in that particular Easter egg, that's a different reality. That's not the main Dumbo you're thinking of. That's some other Dumbo. <laughs> but also it could have been seen in that universe and then... So it could have actually been a movie in that universe as well. It very well could have been. But the last time I saw the old school Disney verse was in Once Upon a Time. And now that we've mentioned it, Dumbo did not make an appearance. There was no Dumbo in Once Upon a Time. There was that dragon. There was that ogre thing. There was whatever that thing is. But there was no Dumbo. No Dumbo. Anywhere to be seen. So what else have we learned about the multiverse? You've got things like uh, from the Disneyverse. The DuckTales with the ramrod machine. That could open the portal to the Darkwing Duck. And to the Floopy Dogs. And the old school DuckTales. The dragon stole my ice cream. Sea monster! Yep. Sea monster ate my ice cream! My ice cream! A sea monster ate my ice cream! A sea monster ate my ice cream! A sea monster ate my ice cream! Oh, and then you got Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. How that crosses over through doorways. Yep. But do they doorway to other realities? They, they probably would cross over with other Pixar properties, wouldn't they? I'm tipping so. Yeah, no, that I think there was in one of the movies. Is there a Pixarverse? Pixarverse confirmed? There probably is. I know some of the Pixarverse falls under the Disneyverse, because some of them have shared properties. Yes. But again, in the one true multiverse, they would all exist, but also they wouldn't exist. Mathematically speaking. How does this work? I need to figure this out. Can we actually achieve a one true multiverse where all of these different things all intertwine? I'm not sure we can. Half of them go off Simpsons time, half of them don't. However, there's bleedovers in between. We already discussed how Family Guy had the pregnant lady forever and then she finally had the kid. What if that reality, the Family Guy reality, even though it's crossed over with The Simpsons and is in theory shared world, what if it is actually still separate timeline with the portal between being somewhere that they just didn't see, didn't acknowledge? You know, a lot of lore on portals are portals that people aren't aware of. Going back to the infinite Ikea. You thought you were walking into a regular Ikea. Boom. Now you're, you're trapped in the infinite Ikea because you didn't realize it went through a portal. Yeah. So what if Family Guy has the portal, but they're actually, um, they're on a universe that's actually on the bleed over between. You've got the, if there was a true infinite string of true infinite value, and it contained everything, all multiverses you could imagine, and then Timmy's secret wish bled out into the nearby universes and, and went down the chain. What if it went only halfway down the chain? So half of the universes have frozen time, and half the of them hand. are in real time, yep. but there's a few in between, right in between, that have a weird warpy time. And no time in any show has been more tedious and warpy to me than South Park. Oh yeah. In the show South Park, the characters age one year per decade in our time. In real time, 10 years go by, in the show, they have multiple Halloweens. Spooky vision. Arr. Biggie Smalls. Multiple Christmases. Howdy ho! Merry Christmas, Charlie Manson! Gator, gator, gator! Jesus, behind you! Hey, come on, boys. You can spend Christmas with us, Canada style. That's it? 10,000 years of darkness, and I don't even have a Merry Christmas? So you had multiple president elections. However, the boys age by a single year at the end of that decade. The show's now been running for almost 25 years, and the boys, it, from the start of the show at 8 years old, have now progressed up to 10 years old. So the, the, the theory about the time 
what I'm calling slow time or South Park time isn't as mysterious as I'd thought. I spent hours, days, years building conspiracy boards because I was convinced that the time was related to Kenny. Kenny dies, he comes back to life. Turns out that his parents were in a cult when he was young and that's why he's got cursed with this magical ability of death. But it turned out not to be related to the slow time. We can write off the slow time of the South Park as multiverse nonsense. Do you think everything that happened here in our dimension, basically, yeah. do you think it would happen the exact same way again after time finishes? Ah, uh, well, going back to the infinity of the multiverse problem, um, an infinite amount of them, yes, they play, play, play out exactly the same. Word for word, letter for letter, 100% exactly the same, an infinite amount of times. However, an infinite amount of times, it would go different. Yes. From, from every possible minor way you could imagine to every possible major outcome difference that there could possibly be, given enough time, it would happen. And if time did loop around infinitely, then there's infinite time. I feel like that just makes sense, though. Without okay, but well then the question then becomes, is there infinite realities, or is there just infinite examples of time? I feel like it'd be depending on which way you would want to look at it to be honest okay but that version of you that's a cowboy look at him he's great that version is happening simultaneous to you right here right now or is happening tens of thousands of iterations of the planet in the future or tens of thousands of iterations of the planet previous and every time the universe is reborn the planet is reborn you are reborn as a different version and so when you look at parallel realities they're not parallel at all it's all still happening in this one reality it's just a different time instance of this reality like that time when you were a cowboy is that what you're saying pretty much okay i have to clarify because sometimes you fall silent in the audio listeners they can't see the look on your face they don't know i can only edit in so many cowboys yeah i have to learn how to verbalize things sometimes oh that's okay I have to learn how to stop putting cowboys into the multiverse. Hey, what do you know? It's a cowboy version of me. Jeez, you're easy to impress. But there should always be cowboys in the multiverse. Oh, I hate them. <laughs> no, I'm okay with cowboys. You know what the ones I really hate is the, is the goddamn old-timey shit. The castles and dragons and the medieval... Oh, I'd hate to end up in a multiverse world like that. You, you're going to have to deal with the bloody latrines and whatever. See, I, I'd actually love that. You'd love that. You'd yeah. be right, right into it. You'd be back to the future threeing it. You'd be oh yeah, all I'll over. Like, cowboy yeah, you time. probably shouldn't have eight wives and then slaughter them all. There's no promises. <laughs> Depending on the universe, eight wives is okay. I'm trying to find some more to see if there's any other crossovers that we've missed. Oh, I mean, I mentioned the cartoon Nexus. So that was one of the greatest ones I've seen. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that one also had a Teen Titans, Teen Titans Go crossover reference, which ultimately led to its own movie, the Teen Titans versus the Teen Titans Go, where they travel to multiple parallel universes and see countless versions of themselves all in the one little shenanigan. Exactly. Now let's talk about Charlie the Unicorn. No! Because the Charlie verse has just opened up. I haven't watched the third the last one yet you didn't watch the charlie finale so you didn't learn about i don't know if i should give you the spoilers i don't know if you'll kill me or not that's okay you can give me the spoilers so in the charlie finale you didn't see when there was a charlie the unicorn the industrial wizard he's not the regular charlie the unicorn you're familiar with who's you know tired and grouchy yep. this one's a different charlie the unicorn possibly not even of the same origin point but this one was a wizard the greatest wizard and he figured he could use the magic for make some money. Industry, you know? Capture some uh, demons, put them in some cubes, use a magic siphon. It'll, the profit margin was just through the roof. But we learn his security mechanism for his reality is that you have to be a unicorn named Charlie in order to enter. Yep. So coincidentally, Charlie the Unicorn made his way there. But now, is this really coincidentally? Because if we look at Film Cow as a channel, as a whole, we can find that they did Charlie T. Unicron. And everyone's like, oh, Charlie T. Unicron is just a weird parody series of Charlie the Unicorn, obviously. But wait, they didn't just stop there, though. They also did Charlie the Unicorn. 
and Detective Charlie of America, the unicorn. They did all of these other Charlies. How many bloody unicorns named Charlie do we need popping out of this channel before we realize that there's clearly some multiverse shenanigans afoot here? If the security measure is unicorns named Charlie, then there's there's the fist blow. There's there's almost more than I can shake a stick at. Right. I will give you a, head up, a heads up. It has been probably about 12 years since I watched it. I watched it in high school. Jeez, I watched everything all the time. Time's our illusion. Apparently the Lego movie has crossovers. Lego the movie's full of them. That's a whole nother dimension. I don't know whether we can talk about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goddamn Lego movie. The Lego verse. I mean, at that point, we might as well go back into the Wreck-It Ralph with the mini digital verse. Because they, he went in the second movie, Ralph Breaks the Internet, he, he wrecked it, he went to Disneyverse inside of the internet. The internet version of the Disneyverse. Look, all of these princesses are right there running around. You didn't see it with all the princesses there running around? No, I've only seen the first one. Oh, the second one had Stormtroopers. Oh. <laughs> so who framed Roger Rabbit as another crossover? Oh, God, what is that crossover with? Mickey Mouse. Oh, damn. Yeah. So that's actually in the Disneyverse. That's crazy. Cartoon All Stars. Yeah. To the rescue. It's got like Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I think that is from. Are they from DuckTales? Yeah, yeah, that's Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah. So there you go. What, what what movie was this one? Is this Hugh Frame Roger Rabbit? No, nah, this is another one. Cartoon All Stars. Cartoon All Stars to the rescue. Um, Some of those characters aren't Disney, though. Look, there's Daffy Duck. Yep. The fuck is Daffy Duck doing there? I don't know. Garfield's in there too. Oh god. <laughs> right, so we could probably write that off as somebody's drug induced fever dream. Oh yeah. I mean in the multiverse, in the grand scheme of the multiverse, it does prove my point though, that they wouldn't be restricted by copyright bounds. <laughs> Fucking anything goes. The movie. <laughs> oh yeah. What's that? The mask? Yeah. With and what? Ace Ventura. Oh god, no. <laughs> That's actually tragic. Wait, no, that's that. That's just, they're both played by friggin' what's his name? Jim Jim Carrey, isn't it? The Jim Carrey. So it's like the Jim Carrey verse. Yeah. Like it was your Jim Carrey Saturday Night Live sketch, the House of Carries. You seen this Jim Carrey reunion? Look at them. They're all Jim Carrey. There's so many characters. There's all on the screen right now. Well, we've only really discussed multiverse in relation to TV shows and uh, movies. Yes. But we completely forgot about the completely legitimate video games you go back to say spongebob squarepants spongebob has appeared in video games based on nickelodeon nickelodeon races nickelodeon yeah. battle brawl whatever it was called and so the crossover is canon yeah things like fairly odd parents and spongebob being able to coexist exists already that's a that's a form of crossover yeah it is you know you've got things that like super smash bros and you've got, you know, all the beams of light coming down, striking all the characters. Boom, Bowser. Boom, Mario. But then you've got characters, Sonic the Hedgehog. He's running at full speed. There's friggin' Pikachu. Pikachu's doing quick attack. It's not fast enough. Sonic the Hedgehog's gonna try and save Pikachu. Boom, both of them gone. And then you've got Kirby on a warp star, flying along so fast that it literally warps out of reality. And that's the only way to escape the death beam light. Kirby, confirmed. Fastest <laughs> being in the friggin' Super Smash universe. Well, makes sense, though. Faster than Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's riding a warp star. He goes so fast, he literally warps out of reality. Which was good, because it turns out all of reality was consumed by darkness. Yep. And by not being a part of reality at that moment, Kirby completely survived and was able to return and be the bringer of light, saviour of the darkness. Makes sense. Ah, oh, just visually stunning. What yes. amazing multiverse cinematography right there. Yes. Adventure Time has established a multiverse. Um, as, as you may have mentioned, like there's, there's Grass Finn, because of that time when Prismo sent them to a farm world, and there was an alternate Finn, and an alternate Lynch, and an apocalypse, and the Lynch got the Enchiridion, and the hand got sliced off and fell into the infinite portal, infinite Lynch hands across the multiverse. Yep. But that's not what we were going to talk about. We we're going to talk about the Ice King and his fan fiction for Fiona and Cake. Because you were telling me that it's a fan fiction. Yeah, right? it was. Because um, Ice King wrote it in the show. Ice King did write it multiple yeah. times, yeah, actually. He, he wrote several of them. 
But the reason why was revealed in the episode Fiona and Cake and Fiona, in which the Ice King reveals that the images of them are beamed into his head at night when he sleeps. And it's revealed in that episode that there is a VHS tape recording of a weird signal that was an adventure of Fiona and Cake, for real, with the print, the, the Queen of Ooh in it and everything. So the timeline adds up. It's got to be in the same timeline because King of Ooh exists in the current timeline and Queen of Ooh exists in the, the timeline of Fiona and Cake. Although King of Ooh does say that he could be, you know, thousands, millions of years old. Maybe. Could be. But we don't know that. He seems more like a charlatan, a bit of a, a con fella. So the, the female version was hiding in the coffin, trying to trick them into bringing uh, snakes, you know, cakes, cakes and snacks. And so it was a bit, a bit of a trick. So the, the prince, Queen of Ooh seems just as dodgy as the King of Ooh. Exactly. Adventure Time Multiverse confirmed, established, and they're actually doing a spin-off series, Fiona and Cake, the show, where the Ice King finishes his story. I'm assuming he's, re- he's turned back to Simon at the end of the show. Uh, he's Simon now again. But he's got to try and save Betty, yep. I suppose, is probably what he's trying to do. Because um, Ice King always knew that Fiona and Cake were real in some sort of plane of reality. Somewhere, somehow, across time and space, they'd be real. And it seems that um, from the, the cover art right right there, you can see Simon seems to have made his way to Fiona and Cake's universe, finally, for some reason, somehow. And I would suspect, based on that time with the book, with the golub on the one page... Boom, right there on the other page is a species known as Abraxas. And this particular Abraxas seems to be named Malak and has portal abilities. It seems that there's some sort of infinite loop to create portals. And so if Abraxas can create portals, probably between multiverses, I could see why it would appear in the book on the opposite page to Gold. Comparable powers, it's pretty damn powerful if that's what it can do. So I would suspect that Abraxas is the secret new character that gets introduced to make the whole show make sense. Well, that would make sense if it, they put him in. That would make sense, you reckon? Because, I mean, why else would they put that big Abraxas clue right there in the finale? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, Cliffhanger. Oh, Cliffhanger, oh, of course. <laughs> we have figured it out. But I love I love the Ice President. By the way, here's an image for you to see, by the way. There's the Ice President reading his book of Jekus the Raccoon. And I love it. Flynn, Flynn the Human I love it. person. <laughs> I mean, you've also got the weird crossovers that, you know, they might not be 100% canon, but they still totally happened. I mean, going back to, like, Uncle Grandpa, Steven Universe. That episode is not canon. It's not canon to Steven Universe no. at all. There's a character development that Steven goes through. That just completely is obliterated in the next episode, and he has to learn again a separate time. So he had to learn the same lesson twice, because one of those times was not canon. But because of the way the Uncle Grandpa show goes, I think it's a non-canonical show to begin with. Which means everything is canon and nothing is canon. It's all just nonsense, right? Yep. Well, that also just makes sense in itself, too, because it's an alternate universe. It's just what happens in that one. Yeah. <laughs> I do hate the semi-canonical stuff, because it all is canon to the multiverse. Like, uh, there is a Rick and Morty collection of short films called the non-canonical version of Rick and Morty. But it is canon to the multiverse. That time when Morty was the fly, that that still totally happened. And yeah, exactly. Somewhere in the infinity, Morty was a fly. That, that happened. That time with the Slimer, that was real. Yeah. <laughs> Saw that. I, that's why I don't understand all of these... There's people online right now that are complaining because they saw a live-action short with uh, Christopher Lloyd playing Rick Sanchez. And they were like, he can't be Rick. He doesn't have the energy to be Rick. And it's like... But, yeah, but that's the whole premise of this show. There's infinite amounts of Rick. Yeah. So but, what's to say that there isn't one like that? Yeah, but they, that's, what, that's exactly what I was trying to say is that Christopher Lloyd is live action rick exactly rick the cartoon version all of the cartoon versions of rick are based on christopher lloyd and his performance in back to the future yeah if anybody is the live action rick sanchez it's got to be christopher lloyd right yeah but then you've got these same people they're complaining about the the japanese anime version episodes of of rick and morty they just released a new one for halloween by the way yeah brand new little 10 minute episode you can go and watch it's all very japanese but it's all rick and morty it's 100 percent canon to the multiverse but not canon at all to the Rick and Morty verse. Exactly, because it's Japanese Rick and Morty. Yeah, but again, Rick and Morty is one of those shows where when people talk about the canon, it's like, 
Well, what canon are you actually talking about? Are you talking about C-137? Because I don't care about C-137. Yeah, exactly. I care about Mystery Rick. My Rick is the Rick that lives in the universe where Mr. Poopy Butthole exists. Exactly. That's not C-137. No. That's some unknown Rick for some unknown reason. Yep, but it doesn't make Rick any less valid in the multiverse. No, but that's why when people start saying, like, oh, I didn't like the the, the thing because it was non-canon. It's like, non-canon to what exactly? Because in the multiverse, that totally happened. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that's pretty much what the show was about. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they should watch this show to realize that there's infinite versions of Rick. So... There's infinite versions. You've got the lobster version. You've got the teddy bear. That's a Nazi version. You've got the Cronenbergs. You've got that lizard Rick. What is the deal with that lizard Rick? <laughs> Canonically speaking, lizard Morty is not lizard Rick's Morty. Exactly. Lizard Morty got turned into a lizard, as a Lizard Rick was actually always a lizard. So what the hell is up with Lizard Rick and Morty? L- Rick, he's up there just scuttling around, I can see him. Yeah, but it's saying that, like, it'd be like debating that lawyer Morty can't be Morty. Like, can't be a Morty, because he's a lawyer. How do you mean? I'm not saying that Lizard Rick wasn't a Rick. I'm no, just... that's what I'm saying, because, like, it'd be basically to say, like, debating that whether like the real life version and then the japanese version oh all, right they're yeah, all yeah. still real they're all still morty's but exactly one's a lawyer and one's japanese and one's live action yeah. by the way i did manage to convince a few people that the live action morty was actually sweater morty that's why he was wearing that sweater that's awesome and acting so different than you would expect morty to act <laughs> it's just that's sweater great. morty yeah i i do enjoy the multiverse as a whole but I do think that there are holes in the multiverse that we need to build still. Exactly. Well, thank you for enjoying the multiverse with us. Hopefully you learned something. I think we maybe did too, or not. Who knows? Anyway, make sure to like, subscribe. This has been Head Casey and... Connor. Making a thing. So enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Get out of here.